afternoon, everybody. Uh, are you ready to start? Are we ready to start? OK. Uh, welcome to the first, well, public CSM panel ever held. Uh, I'm not going to introduce them. They're going to introduce themselves later. And we have an independent moderator for the meeting, because this will be a meeting between you and them. I'm not going to get involved in any way. So <laughs> I'll leave you to them, or them to you. It's <laughs> Anyways, but we will start off by them introducing themselves. Then I'll say a few words you can read. Well, the second election period has started, started today. And then you can read the dev blog about some of the changes the CSM has actually done already. And those are only a few. But over to you. Let's start with the chairman. OK. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming this afternoon. My name's Andrew Cruz. Uh, in game, I play a character called Jade Constantine, and I'm the executor of the Star Fraction. Um, I stood for election in, the, in CCP's inaugural C CSM six months ago, and to my great surprise, ended up uh, coming first to the popular vote and becoming the chair. It's been a very interesting six months. We've had a great deal of uh, issues to sort out administratively. Um, but I think looking back, we've produced an awful lot of uh, good work and promoted a lot of good issues from the community to CCP. And I think we've helped to refine this process and have left it in a pretty good situation for the next CSM that's going to be taking over with the election that started today. Anyway, that's my introduction. So I'll pass you over to uh, Deirdre. Um, yeah, I'm Deirdre Val. I am uh, here as a representative uh, on the CSM as a representative for Eve University. Um, most people probably, well, if you were at the Alliance panel, you know who I am. Um, I'm not really going to say much else because I'm more interested in the, um, in the questions rather than me monologuing on. Um, just the one thing to say, make sure you vote. I don't care who you vote for. Just make sure you vote for someone in the current election. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, I'm Bane Glorious. I'm from Goonfleet. I was there pretty much since the beginning. And uh, I'm just a regular guy, more or less. Um, shut up. <laughs> Which part is less? <laughs> anyway, um, I recommend anybody with an aptitude for game balance and a passion for it as well to please seek out the CSM, because we could use your skills in this you know, whole thing. Also, Jade Constantine is a Dutch bag. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, hippie. And, yeah. He's the Wigger Messiah. Thank you. Don't make Dar me separate you two. Darius Johnson, uh, Goonfleet, and uh, I have nothing else to add. <laughs> Let my people go. <laughs> Broke fist. I am uh, Tasco Hopkins from Henry Loaded, executor of the Alliance, and uh, I have been an alternate during most of the time in my CSM, but I have been recent, recently uh, become a full member in the last few months. Yeah, that's it. He actually replaced Hardin, if you were wondering where he'd got to, because he was in the original lineup. Um, I'm Alison Wheeler. I was actually number nine on the list in Anazuni in game from Electus Matari. Matari will beat anybody anytime. Thank you. The, I was like, if you thought I wasn't memorable, I was the only person who's been kicked and banned from the channel. That may remind you. Word. I didn't stand. <laughs> um, my name in, in game is Serenity Steel, and uh, in real life, Shane Smart. And uh, you might know me from the Alliance ranking or Outpost Alert. Andy. I'm at the Ops I'm Evie Opsa, and uh, uh, well, I was the secretary of this uh, council, and I made sure the paperwork and all that sort of stuff uh, uh, well, was filed out properly and uh, submitted to CCP. And right now I'm uh, working on the wiki side to improve transparency and communication with the player base. My name is Charlie Eriksson, and I play the character of the Vista Visitor, and I fly with Vita Corporation. All right, calm down, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I'm supposed to, no, <clears throat> I am going to maybe not enumerate the, the, the exploits of, of CSM, but uh, from CCP's perspective, it's been a, just as painful procedure as, as 
it probably has been for them to actually try to work together because convincing a company to let the players in and have a voice is, is easier said than done. However, like the blog says, and you can just read it on your own time, but there have been changes both to how EVE game design, the, the, the designers actually think, and the CSM is brought up more and more often in internal channels, and we are actually reaching out to them and asking for their opinions, their help, their, yeah. So all in all, we consider this a huge success. We, we, we are really glad how it's been doing, and we are definitely going to improve it, continue to run it, and make sure that you guys through the CSM can have an effect, a structured communications channel into CCP. Uh, now I leave you on the mercy of, of the, the <laughs> Rand Ronald. T tender mercy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Take it over. Thanks. Um. Oh, so, so I'm, I'm Ren Reynolds. If you read the uh, CSM document, I'm, I think I'm the most referenced person in the bibliography, actually, because I, uh, I write philosophy of, of these things, and I'm running a think tank now. Um, so uh, j just to kick off, because uh, I think one of, the, one of the burning questions might be sort of what, what's the point of the CSM, or, or, or particularly kind of what has been the point, and what's been... I was wondering for, from any of you, what's been the kind of like the number one achievement of the CSM for this session? And then I will leave you to the crowd. Okay, um, my, from my perspective, I'd say our number one achievement is to actually take what has been quite a prototyped, reckless, leap of fate style process and make it work. I mean, when we took office, we literally had three weeks in order to come up with a system for holding meetings, a way of deciding which proposals we were going to put before the the council, how we were indeed going to rule on votes. Uh, it was a very highly charged election, tempers were very high, there were a lot of passions, but fundamentally we made a process which worked and we were able to bring those issues to Iceland and have a very, very productive meeting with CCP. And over the course of this session we've pretty much prototyped and defined a process which can now be used by the next CSM. So I guess our greatest achievement was it not exploding in CCP's face. Um, add to that the fact that I believe that we have brought forward a lot of very important issues from the player base, and we've actually made this a worthwhile and valuable process. Mm. Does anyone pick up, want to pick out a specific issue that you've... One thing I would like to sort of put to rest is right at the beginning, during the election period and subsequent, it was, oh, these people just want a jolly free holiday in Iceland. I'd like to tell you it wasn't. Um, I think all of us have said that at least during the first two or three months, the learning curve, the fact of reading the forums almost 24 hours a day, I mean, we weren't actually playing in game at all anyway. And in fact, although, yes, we came to Iceland, in the height of the summer, brilliant sunshine, it was actually warm. We stayed indoors in a, clo in a room that was darkened with all the blinds down for three solid days with one side of the table of us with laptops, the other side of the table with devs with laptops, arguing in detail very, very vehemently, and it, I think a lot of it was CCP saying, actually, we hadn't really thought this is how the game was played. There are certainly things that CCP have said to us is, they created an idea, and then suddenly players are doing something entirely different. And that is, again, something we have picked up as the CSM, to say, well, this is how we've done it, and they didn't think that way. We've been useful for them as a sounding board. There is nothing worse than a person who designs code. To, you can't test your own code. You have to have other people. We have been those other people on your behalf. Anyone else, or should we go to the floor for questions? Okay. Right, the hardest thing of this is actually seeing you people. So, yeah. house lights out, please. Hands up if you have a question. Obviously, never been a rock star mm. before. I, I haven't. <laughs> I'm a rock star now. Yeah. Uh, over there. Aha! There's one there, one there. Over there. Shouting might be just the best option at this point. Ah, Peter's yeah. running with a microphone. There's a giant man go, with a mohawk and a microphone. Go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, I don't, I don't really play the game that much anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not, we don't either. Thank you. Did you um, vote? However, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that screen there. That's a very nicely presented uh, a blog and. You mentioned mining, um, suicide, ganking, and reloading. Now, I understood that the kind of the, the, the bigger issues we have in Eve right now are things like lag, post warfare, 
<laughs> zero zero <laughs> combat, all, all, all that kind of things. To what extent have you guys made any changes to those big issues? If I can respond to that. Yeah. Go, here. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, the lag is really, like we can go to CSP and say, fix the lag, please. And they're gonna say, yeah, sure. Once they know how. They recently introduced the stackless I.O. and all that goodness. Um, but you can't, we can't really just tell them to reduce the lag. Um, so although that's a major issue, it's also very intangible in terms of solution and problem. Uh, the uh, zero, zero problems, POSs, um, that sort of thing, um, is it's a very, very complex issue. And it was brought up, well, we had quite a few zero, zero issues brought up. An awful lot of them. But quite a few of them didn't make it through because um, the CSM couldn't agree on the correct uh, approach to, or indeed the correct definition of the problem. And this is because it is so complex and people have so many different play styles. So one person might want to give all POSs 10 times the amount of hit points, the other person wants to reduce them by 10 times. And, they, and either or both of them have this a different play style. One wants to defend, one wants to destroy everything. And um, it, it is very, very difficult to come to an agreement on those issues. Well, one of the things that I think either in this council or the next um, we're going to have to do better is, is expectation management. What you're asking, or what you're talking about specifically is, hey, um, these very important things that are very important aspects of the video game that I either play or used to play uh, 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 it need to be fixed. And, and, and I think we recognize that, but we don't really, we're not in a position position to, 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 to make large things happen in short periods of time. Um, I think that there, there has been a lot of input in, in, into what you're saying as far as passes and zero, zero warfare is concerned. Um, and I think you're just going to have to kind of be patient in that as hard as it may be. Um, Alison? Yeah. Um, just something to bring up on the numbers you were just saying. I think we've probably had over 100 items have been brought to us through the forums, through the GTA, to actually bring to our discussion. They've gone on for maybe three hours, three hours, four hours at a time online in text. And we've probably taken forward about 70 or 80 towards to CCP. Most of those are things that are either back burner or will be progressed as their pipeline goes. These just happen to be four that are fairly quick or easy to put in. There have been others that aren't up there. Um, it's a pity because at one point they said, oh, we'll put a little flag on everything that was a CSM thing. The trouble was we've discussed so many things, both formally and informally, that you aren't necessarily going to see exactly what we've done and what we've not. But just as I, in fact, voted about an hour ago, it is worth doing because you need that wide range of input to say, yes, these will work, these won't work. Uh, well, uh, Andrew, then, uh, Ava. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very important to realise that... The issues like zero zero warfare are not going to be quick fixes in any way, shape, or form. And a company like CCP are planning their development effort a year in advance anyway. Um, a lot of the things we're going to see in this expansion, the next expansion, the expansion after that or whatever, are, to a degree are pre-programmed. What we have been able to say to CCP over the course of our term is to actually express the concerns of the player base. Now, if the player base think post-warfare is shit, and most of you almost certainly do, we have been able to sit down with the senior developers at CCP at every stage and say, hey guys, post warfare is shit. Something has to happen about it. And I mean, I've, I've seen, I would say, a groundswell of change from CCP over the last sort of three or four months where they're actually beginning to realize this. I mean, we've had round tables at this uh, fan fest where we're talking very seriously about radical changes to zero zero warfare. Um, remove, possibly decoupling sovereignty from POS mechanics, possibly looking at ways forward which will actually change the game and improve the game. But I mean, these are not, a dev can't flick a switch and say, okay, we're going to improve zero zero. It's got to be a thought process. And I think the role that we've played is to actually put this issue right into the foreground and say, this is something which has got to be importantly addressed in the coming year. Eva? 
Uh, yes, uh, zero zero uh, sovereignty mechanics and all other issues in zero zero are quite complex and we need a lot of player feedback for that because our opinions are diverse and it's not our opinion that counts, but it's the player opinion. I think that's why the roundtables here at the FanFest were quite productive. I mean, uh, Darius uh, brought up uh, some quite some uh, good ideas. Uh, I brought up some uh, some inputs and a few other CSM members were present as well. And we need, really need that communication with the player base to see what you want to see in zero zero. It's not up to us to decide what's good for you. Thanks. Oh, fine. Another thing you need to remember is that some changes that have been enacted by the CSM may not be visible until, say, another six months. It's just that's how it long a lot. That's how long it takes to get things done. That's all. Thanks. And and, and to, to say, I mean, um, we do have some dev panels here coming up in the rest of the fan fest. So if you want to pick off some specific technical issues and that, that those are the best places to, to go for those. Here we want to talk kind of more generally about the operation of the of, of the CSM and how we're going to make that better. Um, do we have? Other questions? My retina is. Okay. Peter, anyone? Right. Or just. Has to run. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. There was another question there, so it's going to go back. It's going to be great. Good. See mics. Throw it at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hurry up, the question's going to expire, man. <laughs> not, this, not everybody is like you. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I forget. I too have a button. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Anyway, what I was going to ask is, you mentioned earlier about expectation management, and we've talked about what you thought were sort of your quick, su critical successes. What I'd like to ask is, where do you think the first generation of the CSM's fallen short? Where do you think the second generation needs to go? Hmm. <laughs> Ava. Good question. <laughs> Uh, yes, I really think uh, the communi communication uh, with both uh, the CSM and the players and uh, CCP and the CSM needs to improve. Uh, because right now there's hardly any transparency. You have to dig through the forms and they get quite cluttered. And you can't really see what we've been working on and you also can't see what we are currently doing. So it would be important that the players know what we're up to so that they can still provide input and uh, affect our decisions and influence, their with, uh, influence us with their opinions. And likewise, uh, the um, communication with the CSM and CCP needs to improve, that the CCP needs to uh, bring up some issues they are currently working on and uh, use the CSM uh, to provide feedback from the players to them. Yeah, I think, I think there's big room for improvement in the way the assembly hall, which is the voting forum or the issue forum, is handled on the EVE Online forums. At the moment, it's a bit messy, uh, it tends to be a bit of a free-for-all, people put up issues, there's not any kind of structure for how an issue happens, you debate on it, there's a situation where you can only support, you can't actually oppose an issue, and it's quite difficult to track the process of a player-led issue. And so I think that sort of thing is a little bit chaotic, and sometimes can be off-putting for players that haven't followed the process to this point, to actually come in at a late date and look at it. Uh, that's something that could certainly be improved by later iterations of the CSM, but is going to involve a certain degree of cooperation with CCP's technical people to make the forum work as it should do. Mike? Uh, yeah. uh, I personally wanted to raise a few issues that I just never got around to because I'm lazy, which was stuff like <laughs> buffing tech when frigs and cruisers, because it'd be cool. And uh, I don't know, maybe buffing mining or something, because it kind of sucks. But other than that, I got done all the really important stuff I wanted to do. I think um, one of the things that can be improved is internal CSM discussion. Um, very often now we have about um, 20 minutes devoted to a single issue where uh, one of the, uh, essentially an uh, issue champion puts it forward and he explains <laughs> it and people put, uh, people ask about it. Um, and there is not that much room for discussion, especially because you don't want a meeting to go on for eight hours. Uh, we've tried. An internal, <laughs> yeah, we've tried. It's not a good idea. Um, so, the, and we rec only recently got an internal CSM forum. And I think using that, although I'm not a huge fan of the EVE e e forums, um, <laughs> using that more uh, for internal discussion, I think, 
um, that could be a lot improved. Um, Shane then, Shane first then, John. I mean, I think that you had a two-part question. The second part was what what uh, do the, does the next CSM need to think about going forward? And I think one of the things that we really learned was all the issues that we brought forward was sort of five years of backlog of not having a voice towards CCP, and a lot of those issues were actually really minute issues, whether about balancing a ship or, um, yeah. Yeah, lots, lots of really, really small issues. And what CCP were really saying towards the end of the first session together was they want to hear about the big ideas. What are the really big things that, uh, that we as players want to see the, the direction of EVE go to? And that's really, I think, what the second CSM need to, need to do. They all know not to bitch with each other, that's for one thing. <laughs> Yeah, I think one of the biggest shortcomings of this DSM has really been a lack of infrastructure we had. I mean, these two people have made a big difference in providing us with a wiki and a mailing list, and that's been really what we have had to rely on for the first half of the CSM. So I think that is one of the things which I think that the second CSM as well as CCP needs to improve on, uh, so we can actually do the job we need to do and not have to come up with things which should have been there in the first place. Uh, and also things like uh, rules of order and um, ways, more streamlining the way that we talk to people is really important. Well, one of the things that I, that I want to mention also and I think that I think is important to highlight is that um, it, it, we were, it, part of the experiment of the CSM was kind of just shaking the ant farm. Like we're going to throw everybody in a room and we're, we're going to see how they react. And we, we were very, very much having to to create this as we went along. So, you know, there were some growing pains, but those growing pains and, 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 and that experience was, was purposefully that way. It's, CCP didn't intervene um, and, and, and had very little input into how we actually function. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, part of us trying to grow a little space democracy. I think it's kind of sweet. <laughs> Bless. Awesome. One thing I think that second CSM incarnation will succeed with is that there's the expectation management that those are just picking up is on both sides. I don't think CCP were prepared for how we were going to be to them. Um, there was very clear on certain, I thought, um, the faces on the devs when we first met them. Of some of them thinking, hold on a minute, who are these unwashed people who are coming in and sort of saying all these ideas to our nice little product that we've owned and loved for years? And there was this, from their side of the fence, it appeared to be that sort of, they're getting used to the idea. As time has gone, I mean, they promised forum tools, they promised quite a few things for our use to make life easier for them. They've taken their time to come in. I think the next CSM will find that they can build on what we've started, and CCP, from their side, have started to say, yes, we, this is a useful thing. This isn't just a management saying we've got to do this. I think the devs are actually much more involved now than they were maybe in that first month or two. So I think we have another question at the, over there. Yeah, Go. Um, uh, what, what I'd like to know is uh, with the general scale upwards and what is effective, like there's a general power growth with EVE, um, have you done anything to talk about that, like the fact that there's alliances with 15 to 20 titans that, or suspected 15 to 20 titans <laughs> um, that may be able, like is, is there a certain point when this becomes worthless that, that, that just by having that many titans you can win by Alpha striking a carrier, all the dreadnoughts, and everything else becomes worthless. I mean, have, have you addressed this and the general scaling up of ships in EVE? Yeah, we covered that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you say about it? Titans are retarded. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. And one, of the, one of the issues that came up, actually a bit, a bit more concrete about it, is that there's that there needs to be more of a role for the smaller classes of ships within the game so the Titans in themselves don't become just, just the old race for battleships. And that balancing the middle class is one of the issues that never really came up uh, from the forums, but it's something that we, that we raised and we saw as really important, finding more roles for smaller classes of ships. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously been a very key item to start of discussion. I mean, it's combined with the whole problem of zero zero i mean you start looking at the ability to jump bridge titans into a sino jam system for a, a jump bridge or whatever and then use them to defend a sino jammer with multiple doomsday um, it's not just about the ship class itself but i think there was some agreement or there was some agreement we were moving towards that the titan could be changed you could basically look at removing its area effect weapon and give it a super beam instead 
You could do things to stop it warping away after doing a drive-by doomsdaying. You could look at other ways of rebalancing the Titan. I mean, it's certainly something that we have discussed, and we've discussed with CCP, and it is still a very key issue which is going to have to continue to be talked about by the next CSM. I think there's a general question about, I mean, about, about game balance, to, to what degree the CSM can get involved kind of generally with the ongoing balance of the game, whatever it is which is tilting it. Well, um, one thing people have to realize is that we are an advisory body only. We can't go to, C can't go to CCP and just say, do this. Because if, it's, if, if they consider it a bad idea, they're not going to do it. They, are, they, are, they can just say no. Um, as such, we can, we can recommend certain solutions, we can identify problems, but ultimately the actual solution comes from CCP. And that's where I think the, um, the balancing thing, you know, CCP is aware of the problem with the, the ship classes being increasingly, or ships becoming increasingly more powerful. Um, and they're on it, but even if we don't bring the, the exact solution, I just wanted to say that uh, in terms of minor ship balances, the CSM can still be useful if, well, I think it's appropriate to use the CSM for those purposes, just if it's something that would not get recognized any other way. For instance, the recent plus five power grid increase to the crane, uh, that was from the CSM, and honestly, I was trying to get that changed for like a year and a half, and it just wasn't doing, so I just brought it to CSM. That's how it is. I do stuff. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> There's one question over here. Okay. Latest days, Eve University. Do you think the CSM can have any role in helping CCP avoid future PR problems or uh, dangerous quantities of thread knots? Hopefully. I, 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 yeah. I think that <laughs> I think that that the only people who can prevent PR problems in CCP are CCP. Um, I think that we can give our input into how they should deal with specific situations. And one of the things, yeah, we, yeah don't let me get on a microphone. But, it, 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 but one, one of the things that I know I've said to them is, is that you need to be more communicative. You need to be more honest. You need to, be open, you need to talk more with, with your player base. And I think that we've seen a lot more of that recently. As far as PR incidents are concerned, the only thing that can save you from yourself is yourself, right? And as a company, they're going to decide to operate one way or another. Um, we can give them input in how we believe they should operate, but I, they're either going to follow it or they're going to not. Eva? Uh, yes, there have been uh, several PR things in the past, and uh, one of the things was the game time code change, and recently the ghost uh, training nerf, and I think uh, there's room for improvement in, the, in those aspects. Uh, because, uh, well, they were really in your face with it and, well, suckers, uh, we changed this and uh, you have to deal with it instead of just explaining themselves. And I think uh, and that's just one thing that, that could be improved and it's one of the issues I will be raising through the CSM. And recently, uh, you know, with uh, the other changes to game time codes being uh, tradable in-game, uh, they showed they listened and, uh, well, uh, adapted their strategy and uh, reintroduced uh, towards it. Uh, a 30-day uh, game time codes system. Do I swear to that, Andrew, then back. I, th I think just to add to what uh, what I was saying, I think you can you can say, Darius, that uh, you know you, you can only um, you, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You can you can only fix yourself. You can't make it better. Yeah. Other people better. But I actually think that it's I think CCP would be naive not to use the CSM before every dev blog is released because it's a group because it's a group of people that are always going to put a critical eye on it from a player perspective. I've actually got nothing to add to what Shane and Eva have said. Um, I mean, just to add to that, one thing we all had to do when we started this was sign a non-disclosure agreement so that CCP could talk to us about things that we couldn't tell you about. As it happens, that's hardly really happened. Although, and so things like the thread noughts over the game time cards and the ghost training, we didn't know about them until they happened. Um, although the one this week we were, that arrived on Monday about the, um, was it Concord pilot licenses? We were asked a uh, quiet behind the scenes as well on Saturday meeting of what did we think of this and we gave our response and they had to keep that quiet until the dev blog was released on Monday. So there are options in there but it's a question of how much CCP use them to come to us or just do them themselves. I mean, do, do, 
to take the point on a little further, to be, to be a bit more specific, um, I'm wondering what you feel the role of the council actually is and should be in terms of uh, oversight and internal affairs, because I think there are different <laughs> perceptions and arguments about what you are doing, what you should be doing, what you can do. Yeah, I mean, there were certainly sections of the community that believed that the CSM that was delivered was not the CSM that CCP were initially talking about back in the dark days of the T20 scandal, where um, CCP had obviously were suffering quite badly from the corruption scandal and loss of faith in the industry, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, the reality is we can do both. Um, we were given very good access to CCP staff operations procedures um, when we came in the summer. We were able to ask questions. We were able to sort of get it straight in our own minds how CCP are now operating. I mean, I certainly didn't feel that there were, there were any secrets when in CCP's book kept from me at which point I'm able to come back and tell my electorate, I think the house is in order. I think things are cool. Uh, if there was another scandal within the term of a CSM panel, which there hasn't been this time, I think, <laughs> I think the CSM would be able to, to basically improve the confidence of the EVE public and would be able to go and ask those questions, would be able to give their own insight. So I think... The bottom line is it can fulfill both roles. It can be a player advisory council on issues of gameplay and issues of game di direction as well as being a checksum if something dodgy happens. I, I think one of the things as far as, as, far as the internal stuff is concerned um, that, that, that people need to remember is that CCP is a company um, and we're ultimately just dudes who play a spaceship video game. Um, it, it, you know, where I work, um, I, I, I handle internal investigations and I would not open up my doors to anyone. And to say that you would be willing to do that is just silly because you would never really be willing to do that. Um, I think that, that there is quite a bit we've been able to do as far as understanding um, how much, how far they've come as far as their investigative process and, and how far they're willing to go. And I, and I think that it's been very satisfying. Um, but I, I want to manage expectations in that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be looking over Arcanon's shoulder every day when he, you know, is trying to figure out who is looking at scat porn on the internet. Yeah, I got to agree with Darius. I mean, we need to manage expectations. I think that it's a silly thought to think that CSM could be an oversight over internal affairs because eventually they got to look at locks and things like that and we would not have access to this kind of information due to the fact we're not employees. They cannot get us in a way that would be satisfying to them. So there's, yeah. Okay. Um, all I'd say to it really is that we were able to come to the office environment. We were able to ask questions. I mean, we were able to speak to GM Cannon and ask him questions about the internal protocols about how CCP were going to prevent another T20 scandal. Um, we were given details of how CCP are going to prevent that sort of thing happening again. And I mean, I certainly personally found those details to be quite convincing, at which point I've got no reservation in saying to everybody here today, I'm fairly convinced that CCP of today has got its house in order. And at the end of the day, that's all people can ask. So, so process audit seems an, a, an appropriate role, but audit of actual individuals and how they do those processes is a step too far? Well, we are... No, details of investigations <coughs> is a step too far. I mean, process is, is, is open, right? You can say, this is what I do, this is how I go about having an investigation, but the naming names and getting into the minutia of an individual investigation is just never going to happen. Uh -huh. And it, it shouldn't happen because we are not... See, and we should not be CCP's internal affairs department. They have, I assume they have professionals. <laughs> <laughs> it was you looking at the scat porn. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but uh, they have people to do that for them um, and to sort of expect the CSM to be the internal affairs body of CCP, especially when not a whole lot is happening would be a shame if that's all the CSM would do, because most of the time they'd just be doing nothing, because there's nothing to do. Um, so yeah, we can sort of verify that their procedures make sense, um, but that's really all you can expect and ask from uh, what is ultimately a volunteer body and not actual employees. Okay. Uh, Peter, we got another? 
Ah, there you go. Hello, uh, Vegeta from Omniscient Order. Uh, I have a question relating to the sort of uh, just the general CSM idea. Uh, my belief is that the CSM was born, and for both the versions of the CSM were born because the players felt that it wasn't CCP wasn't listening to them. They weren't taking in the ideas that were being brought forth on the forums. And uh, this problem has only grown bigger with the CCP growing bigger, taking on more game designers. And uh, it's harder to, harder to get through because there's more people making a single decision. Uh, adding on to this is the sheer, uh, size of the player base and how it has grown. And uh, my belief is that, well, my question is that, is, is this really necessary? Do we need all this just to reach the CCP game designers? Is it not a simple way of getting through? Because in essence, it's a way of CC. It's, it's a difference in how uh, CCP th thinks now and how they used to think. Sunday. Oh, sorry. <coughs> sorry. <Me>? Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the, I think it's a really good question. Um, one of the things that we were really trying to push through was a bunch of mods to the forums, which would do things like, for example, enable everybody to rate the quality of a post, rate the quality of an idea. Um, <laughs> to uh, bring in what effectively Web 2.0 type tools in the <coughs> forums. And then you could argue if, if, if you as all players could rate and suggest the quality of all the different posts and the information, whether it was contributing, whether it was um, a pro or con of an idea, you could effectively produce the CSM submission document just by selection and rating. And um, a secondary, very important part of that is people that consistently are poor in rating, uh, people that consistently rate, rate poor things good their quality of their, or the weighting of their vote should go down. So you have a sort of feedback and balancing system. And uh, we never really got that to happen. But. Julie? Um, I think it's a good question, but I'm really just going to ask. I mean, now we have seen the diff block, and I, uh, do you think that we have made a difference? If yes, I mean, then it's all worth it. Thank you. Uh, if the question is, do we need people to represent us to communicate what is important to players, to CCP, then I say the answer is yes, because, well, I don't want to be mean, but most people don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of. the electoral college. Yeah, it's, well, I don't know about that, but yeah, that's about it. You walk, you walk down the street when a government proposes a law, you'll see, a, sometimes you'll see marches and demonstrations against a law. You very rarely see people come out on the street and say, we're in favour of this proposed law. <coughs> it's very similar here. Forum warriors, people who go mad on the forum, will post about a particular thing and say, this is really horrible or this really should be done. But in fact, they're coming from one particular play style. The advantage you've got here is that, my God, we've got a, more than nine ways of playing this game. <coughs> and it is supposedly a game. Um, and eight people, people here have got between one and eight, I think, or nine outs, one person said. There are lots of different ways of playing this game. It is not just the people who make the most noise on the forums. Therefore, we are trying to represent the other play styles and the opposition to that and try and discuss what is actually the right way to go. So therefore, we actually help in refining the original idea, taking the view of whether, in fact, it's sensible for all players or it's just a particular group. And if it's something that's going to be good for the majority of pilots, then CCP will pick up on it and much stronger because we've come and said this has been discussed properly. <laughs> an, an, an argument that, that is in kind of e-democracy e generally is that, you know, uh, democracy comes from the fact that you just couldn't do things in the old days without physically <coughs> going to places and physically voting for people, but we have technology now. So, I mean, there is an argument to say, well, we actually don't need a council of people or wise people or whatever it is to represent something. The technology could do that, but it seems that you all feel, well, actually there is some value in physically being in the same room <coughs> as CCP. And of course, I mean, we can get everyone in the same room here, but is there something that, come, that comes out of specifically being distilled down to the nine of you in a room with CCP that couldn't happen any other way? E even if there's a thousand devs, there's still 300,000 people. If you've ever tried to sort through 300,000 posts, it's a little difficult. In Goon Swarm, we have 3,000 people, and there's no way that I'm going to read all of their private messages, right? And I wouldn't expect them to do that either. You, you have to be able to filter through the, the, the noise. The signal-to-noise ratio needs to be a lot lower. Um, I think that in a perfect utopian, follow the Olympic road, you know, world, we would, we, you know, they would be able to listen to each and every individual's ideas, but that just doesn't exist. Um, and I think the council is a interesting stopgap to that. 
I mean, I think it's very useful for there to be a procedure and a structure which needs to be followed for uh, an idea to get forward to CCP. I mean, sometimes if it is just a matter of posting a forum thread and getting all your mates to say, yeah, yeah, I agree, 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 you can indeed get quite poorly thought out ideas or fairly biased ideas, and then you're also competing against everybody else's sort of shouted ideas. The fact that you've got an assembly hall thread, you need to pose a proposal in a certain set of words, the argument needs to be made, you need to persuade somebody to advocate that at a council, and then at the council level, I mean, say you convince me that an idea is good, and I say, okay, I'm gonna argue that at the council level. I've still then gotta argue the case against eight other people that, are, again, do have different play styles and different ideas. Sometimes I manage to get my own way, sometimes <laughs> I don't. Um, but if I do, if that idea does get through, and it does get voted to the CCP's attention, then it's an idea that pretty much has been rubber stamped by, well, nine, five ninths of the community in effect. So, I mean, I do definitely think there is value in this process. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that the inherent problem really is that we mostly get to listen to the um, vocal uh, minority and that's why a council really needs to be had because people have to be responsible for the things they say and do. Uh, if we had it so that everybody could go and vote and there was no council to actually filter this, it would be the case that it would only be the few people who actually was against something or wanted something terribly important done. Uh, the majority will not be represented very much. And people who have specific issues, for instance, the nano nerf, we saw that people rushed to the forum and just smacked, I mean, it's not really productive because we do not get every side of the story, which you do get with the council. And it's, it is one of the things I'm just thinking on the numbers. FanFest is something like 0.1% of the player base. And we wouldn't say that we would all agree on one particular thing because 0.1%, where are the people from South America? Where are people who play this in lots of other countries or languages even in systems that aren't necessarily represented here? In that sense, we are trying to do that job. So instead of being... 1.1% of everybody here said, yes, we want to do this. That 0.1%, but we're reflected as 11% each, as it were, because CCP set this up to listen to. Yes, they've also ignored it, but yes, it's here to listen to. Eva? Uh, yes, one of the other things that's important is that the CSM uh, looks from all perspectives, and it includes CCP pers CCP's perspective. Uh, sometimes uh, CCP does not want to commit to an issue because they have a perspective of the player base, uh, that's, uh, they believe uh, that an issue won't be productive or well, doesn't help uh, the player base or is counterproductive in another way. Uh, take this skill queue. Uh, CCP uh, believes that if there's no skill queue, you log in more often. Well, as if you are going to log into the game and play at 3 in the morning or something. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things we need to, to uh, shift and one of the things we need to convince CGP of, that uh, there is a need for a skill queue and that a lot of players are, are helped if that would be implemented and it won't cut into their revenue or into the commitment of the players in the game. I think you all want a skill queue, so we are working on that. I mean, in fact, just to pick up on the skill queue, that was actually one of our first topics that we discussed in their office just down the road near the docks when we came here. And it was quite a strong discussion on both sides about how it could be gained, what the advantages were to us, whether in fact it should be two skills or one skill following another, etc. It was a much more detailed discussion than you could ever do on a forum. Question down here? Yeah, hi. Uh, Slayer Gunswarm. Um, we can see from the, the blog you've got up there and you've said that there's lots of things that CCP have listened to you about. and things that you have brought to CCP that they have implemented into the game. Do you think that if CCP have a design idea or something that they want to put in the game and you say to them, no, this thing that you're suggesting is a really crappy idea, will they listen to you when you tell them that? If they have something ready to go in, like, for example, the ghost training, if they had came to you before and you had said to them, all nine of you had said, no, we think this ghost training is a really bad idea. Do you actually think they would have listened and not put it in the game? I think, I, I think when you're talking specifically about ghost training, one degree of separation you need to create, you're talking about a, you know, a purely business and financial decision as opposed to a gameplay decision. Um, I, I do think that if there was a gameplay situation um, and our opinions were asked for, um, I do think that those opinions would be valued. 
has there except been, yours. Have, have there been any <laughs> issues that have actually, like, the CCP have come to you with that have been? Um, I, I think I, I think that that if we, I, without getting into detail, there have been cases where we have had a lot of input into things that have occurred. Yeah. Um, it, 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 the, the fact of the matter is they do listen and they, they actually come to us and ask for, for, our, for our advice. It's not, it's not a one-way communication. Just to be clear on one thing, it has been made, it's explicit that we cannot affect anything that is a business, a corporate type decision. But anything outside that, yes, we can argue about. And in fact, we have argued anyway about some things that are purely business oriented. If they were about to enact a really terrible idea, I think we would all at least ask why and hear you know, why they wanted to do it. Whether or not they would still go through with it is impossible to say. Uh, well, one of the things uh, that uh, CCP did come forward uh, with was uh, factional warfare. Uh, because right after the factional warfare launch, um, uh, they realized uh, some players were not quite happy with it. So they came up with a questionnaire for the CSM, and uh, well, I uh, wrote a whole document about factional warfare for CCP. And I committed three months uh, into playing factional warfare and uh, realized what all the issues were and uh, what CCP could do to uh, really get factional warfare improved. And one of the things they did change uh, was uh, like the mission system in factional warfare. Uh, it was too difficult to do those missions because there were larger size ships than the gates would allow. Well, those things were all tweaked. And uh, we will see a lot of improvements to factional warfare based on the feedback uh, the CSM provided. I mean, to my mind, about the only issue where that sort of thing might have happened in this session would probably have been the nano nerf and the speed changes. Um, we did bring it up for discussion on the CSM, but I mean, amongst the nine of us, we couldn't reach agreement. Some of us thought it was a bad idea. Some of us liked the idea of it. Some of us wanted to wait and see. I think if we'd all thought it was a bad, terrible, horrible idea, and we had said, the nine of us think, and our constituencies think, this is going to ruin the game of EVE Online, my gut reaction is that they would have listened. But being as how we were split, we couldn't send any sort of, any sort of common message. So there hasn't really been a test case. OK. Uh, Arcane Carnage, Illuminati. Um, speaking of crappy ideas, this upcoming nano nerf. Um, <laughs> how much speaking of crappy ideas, here I go. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, anyway. How much have you guys had to do with the balancing? And if you have to fall on a side of the fence, are you for it or against it? OK, I've, I, I actually helped do some of the testing on Singularity, or did some test runs with sort of nano ships post-nerf and how they actually functioned against uh, battleships, particularly battleships with pulse lasers. I kind of feel that it's going, it's too far. Um, I, do, I don't believe that. Uh, the current speed balances are going to help small gang warfare, and I think that that will suffer. Um, I think it's got to the point, though, that parts of the community are in favor of it, parts of it are against. There isn't really a common voice. Um, I think it's something we're now going to have to get used to and grin and bear it, and I suspect there's going to be more adjustments in the future. But, I mean, if I had to decide plus and against now, I would be against it. You ask if, uh, if we've been involved in the actual balancing, but CCP has a balancing team to do that. We can identify the problems. We can say, like, ships might be going too fast or the nerf is going too far, but the actual balancing or rebalancing that needs to be done is all, <coughs> all done in-house by CCP. Yeah. I, too, am not going to pretend to have been part of a secret balancing team. Yeah. So as for the... As for the Nerf itself, I think most people are just scared that um, they cur their current play style has to change. But um, I'm going to wait and see how it turns out before I bitch and moan. I mean, no, you're the, not. Need for it, <laughs> <laughs> the need for it was discussed, in fact, at our first meeting in Iceland. And the presentation from the devs was basically the game engine can't keep up with what you get in the maximum speed if you add all the rigs and all the extras and everything else. And so that end of it was a case of it's got to come down, otherwise there's going to be a breakage. On the other hand, I fly blaster boats, and I want to get in range. 
So uh, apparently we, the next thing starts in this room at six, so we need to get out pretty quickly. Um, as I wasn't it's given any rules. more important than they are. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. There may it's be more not timetable to seven, so. No. Um, yeah, as I wasn't given any rules. I mean, has anyone from, from CCP got a question you want to ask? <laughs> there was a rather large gentleman with a mohawk. I believe he had a question. <laughs> <laughs> And not will you leave the stage? Yeah, I've been talking to you quite a lot, so I, I, I know what you feel, but... but uh, and it's an hour of him tomorrow. And, and uh, the thing is, you've been discussing this, this entire thing, and, 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 and you mostly answered my questions. I mean, your gut feeling about whether or not CCP will actually listen, uh, you, you say yes. Uh, the gut <laughs> feeling of whether... Of, Unless this you is know actually better. useful, <laughs> then yes. So I, my belief is that this is a, such a success that, that I actually, I'm going to press and, and, and use my body weight to actually implement even further changes to the CSM. What those changes might be, I haven't actually figured out yet, but <clears throat> there will be enhancement to it. I, I guess, so as a closing guess thing, right. does anyone have a key thing that they that want to change for the CSM for the next... Next group. Less structure. No. Yeah. Less structure. Yeah. Six months is enough, really. Six months is enough purely from our side of the fence. And also, the same reasons I didn't stand again this time straight away. There needs to be a change of people because each person is going to bring different to it. So, yes, there are what, one third of us are standing again. That's a good number. You're getting some carry on, but you're also getting new, new blood, um, new thoughts and ideas in to actually discuss it. As long as there's that balance of different play styles of zero, Care Bear, etc. No sex, Don't follow my direction when you say Sorry, I wasn't. <laughs> oh, I, I personally think we should get free booze and we should be treated like rock stars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cheers to that. I mean, all I'm going to say is I think it's now very important that the player base take this process seriously. Seriously, get out and vote. If you think that anything you've seen from this CSM, you could do better, you could bring some kind of value to this process that you haven't seen the first time around, I say run, because this, I'm fairly convinced the CSM is now going to continue, and CSM and CCP are going to back it. And long term, this is more going to become something like jury service. It's going to be something that long term <laughs> members of the community feel obliged to do and do their time, because we're going to run out of people that just want to do it for the, the sake of being elected and are basically want to be rock stars. And we're going to get, we are going to need people who are going to come in and bring value to this process. So basically, everybody who thinks they can do better needs to be standing for election, needs to be voting, needs to be taking this seriously. Basically, put your money where your mouths are. Right. TLDR, it's actually a good idea. You have, yeah. You have yeah. Yeah. I really think that it's important that people spread the worth of the CSM because the people I talk to who's the average Joe in the game, they run missions, they maybe do some mining. They think this is a really good idea because they have things in the game that bothers them. So they're really excited about the idea, but it's very hard to reach these people unless it's uh, word to word, uh, mouth to mouth even. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> slight. <laughs> Hello, I'm a mouth to mouth <laughs> yes, I would really like to get uh, the uh, average player in game more in involved. So just don't just go out there and vote, but also just contact the people you voted for. Because uh, your influence is not over once you have voted. You need to get in touch with the member you voted in and try to get your issues uh, through to CCP. Because this uh, is a two-way uh, uh, communication, not just one way. Uh, well, guess, uh, make sure that your member is committed to it. Right. On that one, I'll close the panel. So thank you very much for the first CSM. Thank you very much. <laughs>